What's going on guys? Dare here with Fantasy Football Advice coming at you with another Fantasy Football video. Today, you read the title, you know what time it is. It's time to go over the second round in our way too early 2021 player rankings. This is of course the second edition in this series. Last week's episode, we went over the top 10 player rankings and before going over players ranked 11 through 20, we'll gloss over the top 10 once again. Before we do that though, I did want to gauge all of your opinion on an upcoming series we have when it comes to free agency my question to you guys would be how exactly do you want this information relayed to you as it stands today i'm currently thinking of doing an overview episode for the first intro to the series going over each team what their needs are in their total cap space available then we'll follow that up with a free agency positional breakdown where we'll go over the wide receivers running backs in more depth in an attempt to predict which team will be interested in what players if that is something that will interest you let us know in the comment section down below or hey toss this video a like that'll let us know that you are interested in seeing more like this moving forward but if you guys do have any more questions or suggestions on these series please do leave that in the comment section down below with that being said though let's hop right into the video and up on your screen you are going to see the top 10 player rankings that we had released last week loaded with running backs as you can tell starting with Christian McCaffrey moving over to Dalvin Cook and Derek Henry followed by Saquon Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, rounding out the top five players we have ranked all being running backs. Devontae Adams being the first receiver off of our draft board. Before we yet again have another run on running backs for the next three players being Nick Chubb, Ezekiel Elliott, and Jonathan Taylor. We do round out the top 10 though with Travis Kelsey, the only tight end we have ranked in the first round. But spoiler, it won't be the only tight end we talk about today. But with that, let's hop over to the player we have ranked 11th, none other than Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers. The big elephant in the room when it comes to Aaron Jones and our ranking of him being so high is that he is an impending free agent for the 2021 season. The most likely outcome though is of course that he will re-sign with the team. Right now and throughout his first four years as a starter, he has had a very favorable contract for the Green Bay Packers, something that's likely coming to an end and if the Green Bay Packers do not decide to pay up for him, you better believe another team will. Aaron Jones since entering the league has been one one of the most efficient running backs both on the ground and through the air. He's now coming off of his second consecutive season rushing for over 1,000 yards and scoring double digit touchdowns as well. We have all seen the Green Bay Packers recently been a bit starved for weapons outside of Devontae Adams so Aaron Jones has been a bright spot for this offense in those dark times which is definitely a factor that does lead me to believe that they are going to be heavily interested in re-signing him. With the team's success offensively this season season and their push to potentially make it to the Super Bowl, Aaron Jones has easily contributed to a number of those successes. So our ranking of Aaron Jones is the 11th player overall off the board for 2021 is going to rely on him being a Packer, but that assumption is certainly not a stretch. On the other hand, we could have a potential Melvin Gordon type situation. Melvin Gordon, of course, a premier running back that hit free agency for the 2020 season. His landing spot, not so fruitful over in Denver. Denver, as we know did have a crowded backfield shared with Royce Freeman as well as Philip Lindsay both successful in their own rights so when Melvin Gordon did come into that offense as somewhat of a three-headed monster that did throw a wrench into his fantasy value and it's definitely possible we do see something similar to that if Aaron Jones does leave in free agency regardless though Aaron Jones worst year on the ground from an efficiency standpoint he was still averaging 4.6 yards per carry when it comes to the receiving game even an area where he has been criticized before he's now had 60 plus targets in two straight seasons 47 plus receptions in back-to-back -back seasons as well and for fantasy football has been a top five running back in both PPR and standard scoring for two straight seasons as well there is no denying that he does deserve a top 11 ranking for 2021 fantasy football that does come with the caveat that he is a free agent this upcoming season and if he changes teams the landing spot it may not be as fruitful as it is with the Packers moving over to the player we have ranked 12th overall so in 12 team leagues this is still a first rounder and it's the second wide receiver off the board that's none other than Tyree Kill of the Kansas City Chiefs when it comes to Tyree Kill not much is needed to be made for a case for why he should be ranked inside the top 12 especially as the second wide receiver off the board as we know he has the best arm talent at quarterback we could possibly ask for in Patrick Mahomes Patrick Mahomes over the past three seasons has thrown a whopping 100 
114 passing touchdowns. Tyree Kill being the team leader from a target standpoint at the wide receiver position on this team, he finds himself in a good position to rack up these touchdowns, rack up these scoring opportunities, and if we know one thing about his ability, it's that Tyree Kill can score from any area of the field. Even since entering the league as a rookie, he still posted top 12 numbers in standard scoring just due to the additional work he was getting in special teams. Since then, the four consecutive seasons after that, Tyree Kill has been a bona fide top 10 receiver and has even finished inside the top two in two of the past three seasons. The one season he didn't was 2019 in which he did finish outside the top 30 in PPR, but we cannot forget he was suspended for four games, 58 receptions for 860 receiving yards and seven touchdowns is much different when you realize that he missed one fourth of the entire season. When it comes to Tyree Kill as an individual contributor, he's been able to average an astounding 2.3 fantasy points per target. No, that's not 2.3 fantasy points per reception. We're talking targets here. And considering Tyree Kill was able to post double digit target games in six of his last nine contests for 2020, the floor and the ceiling for him, getting that type of target market share is extremely massive. Through that span, he posted no games under double digit fantasy points, two of which over 33 points, and five games over 25 points, which just goes to show you exactly how electrifying of a talent Tyreek Hill really is. We're moving over to the player we have ranked 13th overall. We're sticking with wide receivers. It's DK Metcalf of the Seattle Seahawks. DK Metcalf had nothing short of a breakout campaign for 2020, finishing the season as a top five wide receiver in standard scoring, top seven in PPR scoring, posting 83 receptions on 129 targets for 1,303 yards and double digit touchdowns coming in at 10. That was extremely promising to see from this very talented sophomore receiver. He does of course have the added benefit of having Russell Wilson as his quarterback. Russell Wilson historically has been one of the most efficient passers, especially when it comes to near the red zone. So for DK Metcalf to post double digit touchdowns in his sophomore campaign after following up his rookie season with seven, this is certainly an area we don't see as an outlier and a trend we definitely expect to continue. There are plenty of reasons to believe why DK Metcalf can maintain, if not exceed, what he was able to post in the 2020 season, which is exactly why we have him ranked higher than his 2020 finish. Don't get me wrong, if we did draft DK Metcalf here and he did repeat the type of production he posted in 2020, we wouldn't be upset with that. But when we dive into his numbers for what he was able to accomplish last season, you can certainly see some opportunities for improvement in his production moving forward. For starters, this was a player who for most of the season had the highest snap share in the entire league. He did ultimately end the season ranking second in this area, but still ranked first in route participation, meaning the overall opportunities DK Metcalf had for targets was much higher than nearly any other wide receiver in the league. Even realizing his total opportunity though, DK Metcalf still ranked 15th in targets, an area we definitely would have expected to be higher. In fact, Tyler Lockett actually ranked ahead of him in targets, so the overall target market share for DK Metcalf is certainly something we can expect to increase for the 2021 season. DK Metcalf also did struggle with a bit of drops, dropping 8 passes on the season. This is also an area we could see improving as well, and considering DK Metcalf, despite ranking 15th in targets, still ranks 2nd in air yards, 3rd in deep targets, as well as 11th in red zone targets, any increase in his overall opportunity share is going to directly translate to fantasy points. We are of course talking about a 6'3", 228-pound receiver who runs a 4'3", 340, ranking in the 99th percentile in speed score as well as the 97th percentile in burst score. So there's no doubt to us that DK Metcalf is going to be in a prime position to take yet another step forward for the 2021 season. Alright guys, we're moving back over to a running back and the fourth overall player that we're going to pick in the second round is none other than Austin Eckler of the LA Chargers. When it comes to making a case for Austin Eckler to be drafted so high, it's really simple. He's one of the premier receiving backs in the entire league, tied to an offense that can really push the ball downfield, led by impending sophomore Justin Herbert, who posted one of the best rookie passing seasons of all time. Considering Herbert was a rookie this past season, there are many reasons to believe that he could also take a step forward, but a step forward isn't even necessary for Austin Eckler to be in a bountiful situation for fantasy football for 2021. In 2020, the LA Chargers were already averaging 24 points per game. When it comes to overall yardage for this offense, that's an area 
had they ranked top 10 as well. As for Austin Eckler as an individual contributor, we had already mentioned he's a premier receiving back, and when it comes to premier receiving backs, we know the floor for these types of players is extremely high. Austin Eckler himself, since being the starter dating back to 2019, has averaged 6.7 targets per game. That has translated into 5.6 receptions per game, and in those games, he's posting an average of 54 receiving yards. Taking just his receiving production, 5.6 receptions per game and 54 receiving yards per game, his floor through that span has been a whopping 11 points without any work on the ground. Considering this is an offense that can move the ball downfield quite easily with Justin Herbert at the helm, supported by Keenan Allen, having an 11 point floor in an offense that does have plenty of scoring opportunities means not only the floor is high, the ceiling is extremely high as well. This overall does combine to make Austin Eckler one of the safer second round picks. And in fantasy football, safety needs to be valued more than anything in the early rounds, which means Austin Eckler is likely going to be a target on a lot of people's fantasy boards. Speaking of players in the early rounds, I believe will be heavily targeted. We're moving over to a player I could definitely see rising up draft boards, and that's George Kittle of the San Francisco 49ers. Understandably, a lot of people who did draft George Kittle were likely disappointed just due to the injury bug that he did deal with throughout the season. He did ultimately only appear in eight games, and while he was posting starter level production while healthy, whenever a player only plays in half of the season in only one game throughout the fantasy playoffs, the odds of them making a major impact on your roster and in the playoffs is just very unlikely. For that reason, I can see George Kittle possibly slipping, but I don't think that's warranted whatsoever. We've seen enough of a sample size with him, with many a different talent at quarterback, and one thing we do know for sure is that George Kittle is a true difference maker at the position. He's one of the few tight ends that can compete with players like Darren Waller and Travis Kelsey, and looking back at the production he's been able to post, dating all the way back to 2018, it should be no wonder as to why we have him ranked so highly. Since 2018, he's been able to average a whopping 8.1 targets per game at the tight end position. You don't need me to tell you that's an extremely high target market share, something we don't see across the tight end landscape for many players outside of the big top three. Those 8.1 targets per game have been translated into 5.8 receptions per game, 81 yards per game, and when it comes to the fantasy points we can expect from him on a game-by-game -game basis, through this three-season sample, he's been able to average a whopping 16 fantasy points in PPR scoring formats. So when you combine the facts that through the second, third, and fourth rounds, there are plenty of talent at both running back and wide receiver, coupled with the fact that the TE8 in 2020 posted an average of 9.3 fantasy points per game, you can certainly see how getting a positional advantage from George Kittle may be the route that you want to go for your 2021 draft. Alright guys, we're moving over to the back half of the second round here, but before we do, I just have to shout out, if you guys could, give this video a like. It really helps. Let us know that you are enjoying these videos. It helps boost us in the algorithm. So if you could help support the channel, all we're asking from you, just hit that like button if you do enjoy the videos. Subscribe if you are new. And with that, let's get into the sixth player of the second round. Jumping back to wide receiver, we have DeAndre Hopkins of the Arizona Cardinals. When it comes to drafting safe players and players that you know have a high chance of hitting their ceilings, DeAndre Hopkins is certainly a player I can vouch for targeting this year, and that's really saying something I was really not high on him heading into the 2020 season. As we know, free agent wide receivers, there historically have been some growing pains when getting acclimated to a new offense, a new quarterback, and that's something that was completely obliterated with DeAndre Hopkins in the connection with Kyler Murray. In his first season as a Cardinal, he was able to finish as a top five fantasy receiver for PPR scoring formats, even finishing with his fourth highest target total of his entire career, tying his highest reception total of his entire career as well, which is really saying something considering he has had a spectacular last six seasons in which he has eclipsed 1,100 plus receiving yards in five of those six seasons. Three of those six seasons have even been able to eclipse 1,400 receiving yards, two of those over 1,500, and while the touchdowns may not have been there, he did finish the season with six. That just leaves open the door for even more opportunity for a higher end of production if he does build onto that chemistry that he did establish with Kyler Murray in 2020. All right, guys, we're sticking with wide receivers, and for the seventh pick in the second round, we're going to none other than Calvin Ridley of the Atlanta Falcons. When it comes to Calvin Ridley, I believe a lot of people are going to be wondering what's going on with Julio Jones. Is Julio Jones going
going to be coming back and playing? Is there potentially going to be some sort of trade market for him? And while no, I don't think teams are going to be clamoring at the bits to try to get Julio Jones in an acquisition, I also don't believe that Julio Jones starting or not, healthy or not, is going to have a major overall impact on the fantasy value for 2021 for Calvin Ridley. For starters, the Atlanta Falcons have thrown the ball at one of the highest rates in the entire league. This does mean even if Julio Jones does play, there are plenty of targets to go around for both Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley to both see high-end level production. With Julio Jones on the field, understandably, the upside for targets may not be as high from a quantity standpoint for Calvin Ridley. However, the efficiency when defenders do have to plan for Julio Jones does leave open Calvin Ridley to make some really amazing plays. We have seen that in full effect throughout the season, but we have also seen the other side of things where Julio Jones has been outward injured. In those games, the target market share for Calvin Ridley himself is increased, and in those games, we've seen a high end of production from Calvin Ridley as well. This, to me, does indicate that his fantasy value is not tied to Julio Jones being on the field or not. One other benefit going in Calvin Ridley's favor is despite him posting a top five fantasy season by any metric, anyone who owned him knows that he was banged up for a large portion of the season. A full healthy Calvin Ridley last year would have completely popped off, and while nobody can be disappointed with the production he did post in 2020, the potential for a fully healthy Calvin Ridley for 2021 has to get a lot of people excited. Once again, sticking with wide receivers, the the eighth pick in the second round is none other than Stephon Diggs of the Buffalo Bills. As a Stephon Diggs drafter in 2020, I can tell you from personal experience that Stephon Diggs was one of the best fantasy players to own for the 2020 season. Not only was Stephon Diggs safe and secure each and every week as shown by his double digit fantasy points in every game of the season, but we also saw an extremely high level of production as seen by his 20 plus fantasy point games in which he had posted on seven different Different occasions. In the fantasy championships against New England without Stephon Gilmore, he also posted over 40 fantasy points in PPR scoring formats. And while nobody was expecting Josh Allen to take such a significant step forward, I believe heading into 2021, this is an area a lot of us can feel at ease about. At this point, we really can understand that Josh Allen and his arm talent, it's the real deal. Stephon Diggs and the free agent narrative, where free agent wide receivers typically do have some growing pains in their first season. Well, Stephon Diggs, he did not fall victim to that narrative, and heading into his second season as a Buffalo Bill, his second season with Josh Allen, it does leave open the door for even more opportunity, even more upside for the 2021 season. One advantage I'll also note for Stephon Diggs is the fact that he led the league in targets for 2020. When it comes to any sort of half PPR or full PPR, you have to value the floor in volume. Stephon Diggs throughout the season was able to average over 10 targets per game nearly eight receptions per game and when you have an average of nearly eight receptions that means your floor is going to be eight fantasy points in PPR scoring formats before you even add in any receiving yards or touchdowns with that it's no wonder as to why he was able to average over 20 fantasy points per game and this is definitely a trend we can continue to see with Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen for the 2021 season all right guys we're moving over to our first breakout candidate of this list and I know it's a high pick to go in the late second round, but I believe a lot of drafters are even going to value him higher than we currently have him ranked, and that's DeAndre Swift of the Detroit Lions. Now, like I had mentioned, I do consider him a potential breakout candidate. That is, of course, with the understanding that I don't believe he had currently had his breakout for the 2020 season. Yes, he did score 10 total touchdowns, eight on the ground, two through the air, but on the ground, he was only able to post just over 500 rushing yards on 114 attempts. Through the air, he did get a respectable 57 targets, converted that into 46 receptions for 357 yards. Looking at his total yards he was able to post on the season, it was still under 900 total. But considering he was battling the depth chart and he missed three games, I think his finish was very respectable to say the least. One thing he definitely has going into his favor this season is that there is some ambiguity with the potential signing or exit of Kenny Galladay in free agency. Kenny Galladay, while not a huge target monster for this offense, it is going to force the hand of the Detroit Lions to focus more on the run game and passing to the backfield. DeAndre Swift had already proved himself as a very capable pass catching running back. 
through his final six games where he was receiving starter level snaps, 60% to be exact, he was averaging 3.8 receptions per game, 86 total yards per game, and even scored the ball five times through that span. That resulted in a very respectable 16.8 fantasy points per game, which is an area we definitely see some possible improvement on heading into this season where his snap share could possibly be even higher than it currently was at the end of the season. If his overall snap share does increase and the emphasis for the offense does run through the running back position a bit more than it did, a breakout for DeAndre Swift to potentially post 20 plus fantasy points per game is certainly in the cards and would surprise nobody whatsoever. With that being said though, I could still understand people drafting in this range trying to opt for seemingly more safe options players like keenan allen david montgomery players who have already gotten it done in the past or maybe players with a bit more name value in miles sanders regardless we have swift here but let's move on to the final player on this list none other than patrick mahomes of the kansas city chiefs when it comes to this patrick mahomes breakdown i'm not going to sit here and explain exactly why patrick mahomes is so good he's one of the best arm talents we've seen since entering the league and is ultimately one one of the safest quarterback picks we could ever take even considering he's being drafted in the early rounds. Nick has already come out and done a mock draft this year emphasizing the importance of hitting on one of these top tier quarterbacks and with Patrick Mahomes being the best quarterback of these top tier players it's no wonder exactly why we have him ranked so highly. I do believe this is going to be a trend that we're going to see across many leagues throughout the 2021 season and what I mean by that is I do think people are going to put an increased value on the quarterback position while typically we do veer away from that strategy i think for 2021 it's going to make sense for that reason patrick mahomes for the first time since his sophomore campaign is going to be on my draft board and considering his worst fantasy finish since being a starter is seventh overall at the quarterback position he's consistently posted top three production when it comes to fantasy points per game there is no safer quarterback option than patrick mahomes for 2021 fantasy football but guys Guys, that's going to do it for this video. We really hoped you enjoyed. If you did, how about hitting that like button? If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. We thank you all for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.